Do we have to press got it? Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the You Can Live Forever interactive Zoom question and answer session. Uh, <laughs> first, let's just introduce ourselves. My name is Mark Slutsky. I'm the co-director, co-writer of the film. I'm Sarah Watts. I'm the co-writer, co-director of the film. I'm Kaylee Schoenier. I'm the costume designer of the film. I'm Monmano Driscoll, and I play Jamie. And I am June Laporte, and I play Marika. So uh, first of all, I think we just all want to thank everyone who uh, sent in questions. We, I think, expected maybe like 30 or 40 questions. We got almost 350. And I think that's just like a testament <laughs> to how dedicated uh, the people who have connected with this film are. And I just want to say quickly off the top that we are so incredibly touched and amazed by the reaction to this film, uh, to the uh, what you've said about it, content you've made about it. It's you know smart and touching and funny and uh, everything we've seen has been kind of genius. And when Sarah and I started making this movie eight years ago, like we could never could have dreamed to have this kind of reaction to this film. Like we never could have dreamed. This was like, you know, we were hoping get into a couple festivals and then show up on a DVD somewhere. Uh, so obviously it's got a very different way. And we're so thrilled uh, that you are part of it. So thank you again, because you are now part of the story of this movie. So time to answer some questions. So the first and probably the most important question uh, we're gonna ask today is the mac and cheese question. And we want to, the, the viewers <laughs> want to know everyone's take on what makes the perfect mac and cheese, or as we call it in Canada, craft dinner. Let's start with June. <laughs> Honestly, I can't defend Marika's choices, okay? I'm not, I'm not I'm not with it. I know that you need the full butter. I mean, we had the funny thing on set where I was am lactose intolerant and like Onwin doesn't do gluten, so <laughs> it was a great combination, but I think ideally if it's like non-dairy for me, it's great, but I I can't defend like a soupy craft dinner mac and cheese. I can't. I can't. Absolutely. Doesn't, oh, I, doesn't oh, I would agree. You both, butter. you both ate it all at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, we, true. it's, it's true. true. It's actually true. <laughs> it like we had so much. It was in front of us. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> if it's um, there, I, would I'm agree, eat it. I would think I would say butter. I would agree with Sarah and Mark. Butter, butter, butter. But also, I don't know if anyone else agrees. Pepper. Yes, like lots of pepper, seasoning. like yes. the top layer has to be all pepper, like so much pepper. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. butter. Like, We're all team just butter, just right? Butter. Mac yeah. and cheese, like pepper with a side of mac and cheese is how I would eat it. Wow. wow. Seriously. Um, yeah, I think I like, pepper. you know, Sarah and I bonded over our mac and cheese uh, preferences very early in the process. So, uh, next question, how did you prepare for the roles? Why don't we start with Anwen first? Um, I mean, I would say going through the script multiple times just to see like different angles and um, music is a big thing for me. So I, I use like different songs and I do make my own playlist and I have different songs for scenes and specific songs for characters. I would say like music is like the biggest thing for me. And that's like the main thing that I use to prepare. If, if I like really connect with a script and I feel like emotionally attached to it, I feel like I don't have to prepare a lot you know, like writing or anything like that. If if I cry or if I feel like big emotions while I'm reading it, I already know that like my body is connected to it because it it has a reaction. So I know internally that it's like, it's there and I'm already connected in a sort of way. So music and trusting body is my answer. <laughs> Great answer. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I feel similarly to Onwin that um, I think I think both of us, we've talked about how we felt so connected to the script from the get-go. And I think there's a lot that just, for me anyway, about Marika that felt like, I don't know how, but I like connect to her. And um, I think part of that too is like, I grew up in 
Texas, um, not with Jehovah's Witnesses, but with people who had really strong, strongly held religious beliefs and uh, have like been very close to people with strongly held religious beliefs. So it was like what I knew and loved about those people I wanted to like bring into Marika, but that wasn't a super like conscious process. It was kind of like subterranean and just like letting the script do a lot of the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess sort of coming out of that, uh, someone asked, in what ways did you feel similar or dissimilar to the characters that you played? Um, you I, I mean, yeah, I can answer, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's this, I look this way at you. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, I don't, you did it right. You did it right. You're I did it right? right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I um, <laughs> I'll, I'll answer. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I feel like we can all feel similar because it's it's uh, young love and it's fresh and overwhelming. And I would say that's like the most similar connecting wise to it is just like recognizing and having the experience of like young love and it being so intense and overwhelming and monumental, I suppose. Um, I feel like I brought a lot of knowledge and some of my own experience to that. And I, I'm not similar because I'm not as cool as Jamie. <laughs> I would say that way. That's my answer. You go, Jim. <laughs> you are as cool as Jamie. Yes, you are. Oh, yeah, yes. you are. Um, I guess, yeah, I mean, there's so, I tried to bring a lot of, myself to Marika too like there's there's like the cognitive dissonance that she has is something that I don't relate to in my life right now but like there was a time when I was closeted and understood some of what that experience felt like um but like really just letting my weirdness I guess be like her weirdness <laughs> um and how much she feels or how much she's kind of like the black sheep of her family in many ways, um, really related to that. Yeah. Uh, some people wanted to know if there's anything in the script that surprised you when you first read it or felt unexpected. Yeah. The I think, um, oh, the marriage, yeah. Yeah, I, I cried when I first read that. And also the baby. I also Maybe. cried when I first read that. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm sure everyone is, was surprised when they watched it, but definitely reading it for the first time, that was like whole body shock, tears mm. when the marriage was announced, I suppose. It affected me a lot. Did you want to yeah. take the baby and punt the baby? I want to <laughs> eat the baby. Eat, eat the, baby. the baby. No, we take the baby together and we go. Or we eat it and then go. <laughs> Did you know that the Cocteau twin song we use in the in the movie is called Pitch the Baby? Yeah, it's very appropriate, isn't it? <laughs> That's perfect. I think the big the big moment that surprised me was like Marika first kissing Jamie after Bible study. That was like whoa. Whoa, like and it's in the script it's like well, Jamie Jamie's trying to figure out what this means and I'm like yeah, what does this mean? Like it's, it was so, it was just so out of left field. I was like, good for, you get it girl, <laughs> do it. <laughs> Did you learn anything about yourselves playing these characters? After you, Jim. Yeah, I, it's so, yeah, I feel, I feel like, I learned about myself as an artist or more about the way I work. Um, and also just, <laughs> I don't know, I feel, I don't know how to answer this. Um, maybe just like something that I, that I like love and took from Marika was like her, her capacity for love and, um, with that like the the regret comes in but like she just has such a big capacity for love and love for Jamie and that it is um 
it's not just teen angst like it's just it's a very real kind of love and I love that about her in the story um <laughs> I would say uh I I don't know I feel like maybe not as as brave as Jamie or kind of as like strong and I so I, I feel like the ending moment after the breakup scene when she kind of like takes her space and she goes through this traumatic experience and then like walks out the door and decides to go away despite it being probably the most impossible feeling thing to say no to um that's not something that that's not who I am and that's not similar to me I feel like I'm an anxiety ridden dweeb so I feel like in that moment acting it and, and feeling that empowerment and that power of no and choosing yourself over a situation that would be crippling to you um when I was acting it I felt that power in that moment so I feel like that was a bit of a like Jamie teaching me in a sort of way, if that makes sense, because I don't usually feel that way. So yeah, it, I feel like that might have been like a huge moment or just like recognizing that I do feel that in my body and that I'm capable of feeling that and like having the no. Does that make sense? Sort mm. of, kind of. I would say that I suppose was kind of like can be a teaching moment if I, cause I recognize that in my body when I was doing it. Sure. Do you, either of you have a favorite scene from the film? So Probably many. the breakout scene, the I, breakout yeah. scene for me. I mean, one of my favorite things is crying with June. <laughs> I, 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 so, I feel the like, same about you. <laughs> crying with you. I love <laughs> it was, I was such a fun. such a release. Like we knew we we had gotten the luxury of having like a week of rehearsal before we started shooting. We all like had really thoroughly talked about this scene. And then when it came to it on the day, it was just like I just we just had to look into each other's eyes and we're like. Oh, and I'll never, I, yeah. I'll never forget shooting that scene for the rest yeah. of my life. Like I just, it feels sort of like an alternate timeline memory for me. I've like very much felt like a, I was breaking up with you um, and saying goodbye. And I, I just like see your face burned into oh my Oh my brain. God. Yeah, I know. I agree. That was extremely intense. That's burned into my brain as well. Your eyes. And all the ending car scenes too. That is just like, I'll never forget those. Either. Oh yeah, that's so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy that that was on our like first or second day. That's true. Yeah, yeah. car scene. Yeah, day two. The yeah, scene, but the, I, what... I I feel like that's kind of like poetic. First time like acting together and kind of like meeting and exchanging emotion, but it's supposed to be the last time of our our characters. It's poetic. When we shot the breakup scene, I remember that being those one of those rare times when you're doing something or making something that you feel like you're completely in a bubble and the outside world does not exist at all. Like it felt like the the universe did not exist outside that room. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And I will fully confess to um, crying right along with you guys. As it was <laughs> happening, it was such an intense day. It was almost our second last, I think it was the second last day of shooting, I think. And yeah. It was pretty emotional in that room. Pretty emotional. Yeah, we saved it. We saved it for the end. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, then, it was somewhere else on the schedule, but we asked to change it so it could be close to the end of it. Yeah, you guys were yeah. there, but the rest of the crew, we all had to stay in a, a black room. Like the lights had to be off for shooting for light. And so we only had the sound of it with like something over the monitor. So we just sat and listened to you break up. And, and then the lights would go on <laughs> after the take, we would all be <laughs> Oh no. But I remember after shooting that scene, everyone like the crew cleared out and stuff and it was just the four of us and we all lay down on the floor and we listened to pictures of you by The Cure yep. and just yep. like gently wept <laughs> a little bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Let for sure. Go. and I were beside each other and I could literally feel you like, <laughs> like still crying. No, like we were just, we were saying goodbye, you know, to, to the project, to each other. It was very, it was very intense.
very intense day for sure. Mm -hmm. But also very safe, you know, it wasn't like, mm -hmm. it was, we were safe to go yeah. there and then and then move it moving on after, so. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was kind of- It's almost important to us to make sure that you guys felt like you had a wide berth of like, a bubble of safety and a bubble of comfort to just like yeah these characters and have these moments together mm. yeah we, we we'd always rather cut whole scenes to give you enough time to get the important scenes right rather than rush through a million scenes you know what i mean like it was really important that we had that like time padding to find the moment um because yeah that the we, we knew that we would have to sort of like there were certain scenes that had to be right and we could sacrifice other scenes if it meant getting those scenes right yeah mm -hmm. so uh someone asked about june and onwin's uh own queer awakening moments uh was it a character in a show or a movie that or a crush in real life that made you realize did you struggle with it uh any advice for people who are struggling with their own sexuality oh, um sexual awakening <laughs> yes sure uh, um, Angelina Jolie in Tomb Raider as Lara Croft was pretty fucking intense. And I would also say Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns. Nice. She's incredible and I love her and I, I still do because of that. So Catwoman? Um, Catwoman? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Yes. For me, oh, I don't want to cut you off. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go. I just got excited. Uh, it was Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie in Labyrinth. Honestly, it was just True. like, wow, so good. So good. Yeah. And then there was someone in real life too. When I was in middle school, I was aware of, because she was like, well, I like girls. And I was like, oh. And I realized I was like coming to school, dressing up like for her. Um, and that was a, an interesting, kind of terrifying experience because I was like oh no oh this is gonna make my life harder somehow um and then I was growing up in Texas not that all communities are this way and we're certainly getting better but it was a little bit like you just you're not queer queer people don't exist um but thankfully with the internet and the world more and more it's like it takes some time but you'll get there um you don't have to put pressure on yourself for being any uh, anywhere along your queer journey. It's like, you don't have to compare yourself to anyone else. That's what I would say. Great. So we, we got a lot of questions about the audition process and casting and it's a, it's a sort of complex multi-layer subject. So um, Sarah, do you wanna, we'll, we'll start off by talking from our point of view and then we'll, we'll talk from the actor's point of view. So Sarah, do you wanna talk a little bit about how we did that? Yeah, uh, well, first we had a great casting agent, Jesse Griffiths, who was fantastic. And, you know, Mark and I talked about the, ca the casting of Jamie and Rika for so long because it was like, we can't get this wrong. We can't get this wrong. If, if we don't, if they're not exactly right, the movie won't fucking suck. Single and, most important creative decision we can make. Oh, beyond, beyond. And I think it was maybe around the same time we were like putting together our lists of like the vibe that we wanted for the characters and everything i it was it was interesting it was interesting putting together those description docs and everything like that sending them to jesse and then you know i think he told us there were thousands of thousands of tapes that he he you know whittled down and i had actually asked for i had seen i i started to watch some like shows that i knew were shot in canada and there was one show that I saw and I noticed Anwen in it. And she just played this kind of dork with glasses and she kept going like this with her glasses. And I remember being like, oh, that's kind of like a Jamie vibe, maybe a bit dorky, but like- A dork. Well. I kind of like, there was something about her that really stood out to me. <clears throat> and I remember messaging Jessie and asking if, if she was Canadian and if we could get a tape of her. And she sent in a tape. And the rest is history. Yeah, and, and, and then and then you know with what i was super nervous i think we both were about casting marika because it's such a it's such a different kind of role it's such an unusual role it had to be a very certain vibe of person 
and June's tape stood out to me right away as well, and for Mark as well, we were both like, oh, this is interesting, like a really interesting take on the character that I hadn't seen, and yeah, it felt like- Yeah, she was, she was sort of drawing as she was talking, like you had a sort yeah. of par, a, a prop, like a pen, and something yeah. about that yeah. just like made the character, like um, it was, yeah. It was very cool. So it was- yeah, like, it was the, because we did the bedroom scene. The first bedroom scene, yeah. Yeah, the, the looking at the drawing scene. Oh, first. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I just want to say, like, the moment where we first watched any tapes and like heard our script being said out loud was like one of the craziest moments of the whole process because you know we've been working on the script for like eight years and then all of a sudden we hear all these different takes on it and different ideas and it comes to life and like that was that was like a real like that was up there with like seeing the first edit of the movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, I think though, I, I'll also say that like, you know, I don't think there was ever any doubt about either Onwin or June, you know, like I think you were both our first choices and like, yeah. you know, we, we did, we did chemistry tests and stuff, but like, you know, it was like really just to sort of like reassure ourselves, <laughs> uh, but there was never any doubt. Like there was the moment with the chemistry test that I was, you know, really closely watching and I, we did a few chemistry tests with a few different um, actors. And I remember you two were the only ones who seemed to make each other a little bit nervous. <laughs> and that was like a big signal. I was like, oh, okay. Oh yeah, because we flubbed we flubbed some lines or something. Yeah. We got, yeah. 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 <laughs> hadn't flubbed any lines and then you were with each other and you both stumbled <laughs> <a> bit. <laughs> it was so <laughs> well, it was intense and like the chemistry read, like I know we had, we had been, you know, doing it with other actors, but I just like vividly, remember June and how special you felt and how your your eyes just popped and I, I truly felt that you were super magic and I've said this before but when I got off the chemistry read I, I was thinking like even if I don't get this I really hope that June gets this because I, I I don't even know how to describe it it was just it felt like very piercing like I felt that you were super magical and now I'm getting emotional but yeah I remember the first like when you popped in because there were some like technical kind of difficulties and you were it was so cute you were like I can't hear you guys at all and I was like oh my god this this human's just really adorable and then <laughs> you were like my name is Onwin and I was like that's a beautiful name and you're like well my name means beautiful name and I'm like whoa and after our I felt similarly I felt so connected <laughs> to Onwin <laughs> <laughs> I looked you up after because I was like she's just so good I, I think she's gonna get it and I would really love to work with her but it's out of my hands now and I looked you up on IMDb and was like oh, okay <laughs> damn yeah that's cute here we are <laughs> here we so, are uh, so people also want to know like once you actually booked the roles and knew you were working together how did you prepare did you like interact did you work on you know building up your chemistry or the relationship between you two before the shoot we like we dm'd a little bit i think um yeah it's a little it i was feel just like a, the, mainly it was like the four of us honestly through the the rehearsals when we were doing that yeah. it was mm -hmm. the main kind of build like with you two as well i would say yeah i also feel i think our messages right away to each other were just um kind of what we had what we just articulated being like hey I just think you're a really special human I'm really excited to work with you so I just felt safe off the bat I was like I'm yeah. I think this is a very safe authentic human that I'm excited to work with and then was so excited to obviously work with both of you too and yeah that first week of rehearsals was so so helpful like we went out to dinner one night just you and I and like yeah. went and dined a little bit and um <laughs> you know we were spending time together and rehearsing and just hanging out so I saw the first time they met because it was at their very first fitting together yeah <laughs> we were like have you not met it was very very cute and they both yeah. showed up as Marika and Jamie in their ways that they entered the space. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anya was late. <laughs> she was like, do you have any snacks? <laughs> and she texted me like much earlier and was like, I think I might be late because my <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I was like, oh, they are these characters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. That's so funny. Cute. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we were scouting locations and we were getting like, you were texting us with photos of them in their costumes. And we were like, yes, yes, that one, that one. <laughs> I think Kayla, I remember you saying, you're like, it's a good note if I get, if they send like the crying face emoji. Yes. And that means like we yeah. nailed it. <laughs> so it was just them reacting like, oh, it's her mother's um, watch, like sad face emoji. Yeah. <laughs> nailed it. So much. Yeah, the way we interact. <laughs> Um, someone wanted to know if you guys had a favorite makeout scene to shoot. Mm. I, mean, I think I the, the uh, oh after yeah, I was yeah, like bathtub. I think it has to be bathtub. I'm like, we're so let's replay the greatest hits in my mind right now. I think it has to be the baptism scene. Yeah, that was so serene as well. It felt like we were yeah. in a little bubble together. It also felt special just because it was like so important and special to Marika as well. Mm -hmm. It was like, it just like very symbolic, I suppose. And yeah, it's like, I'm going to fucking make out this chick, but also like there's symbolism behind it. We're like consummating and There's the like the bathtub, but also the car. I don't know if anyone feels the same way, but I love the car makeout scene. It was also <laughs> the first time we ever yeah, made that out. Was what was it either day one or day two I forget yeah, but. yeah so it was like extremely <laughs> intense and extremely nerve-wracking so like I feel like that one you know we got comfortable with each other in so mm -hmm. many different ways but like that was like second day or first day of us like literally having to fucking hardcore make out it just felt so intense and there was like nerves in the scene and there was so many feelings so it, it and I love I love how it's cut in the film where it's like oh this isn't so bad. Yeah, have fun, like, um, yeah. <laughs> have fun going out with Marika, boom. <laughs> Just, yeah. they're hard at work there. <laughs> we had to change um, Marika's costume. It was supposed to be a skirt originally, and, and we also had to change Jamie's costume. Yes. But the the leather jacket. Oh, uh, yeah, but, but, oh. The, but no, for the makeup, for the oh, car yes, yes, makeup, yes, yes, the directors yes. were like, no, this is hardcore makeup, so we had to change her skirt. And her, so she could no skirt. <laughs> This is hardcore. Right, hardcore. Yeah, there was also a very squeaky leather jacket at one point. Uh, that, you know, some, some, sometimes you don't think about that. Um, and on the day, <laughs> you realize, gotta change. Um, so uh, this is a question for everyone, which is what are your thoughts on people, how people are responding to the film? Crazy. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I love yeah it. Su super overwhelming in like the the most positive way possible and that and like it, it kind of feels like this is the for me personally like the goal of the film and it feels like this means success when people are reaching out and saying I connected to this on an extreme emotional level I've experienced this and so many messages that uh that say thank you so many people that are saying thank you for it like that feels like success and like we've made people feel heard and we've reached out and you know touched people's hearts who have experienced this I suppose it's yeah. like incre I, it's incredible yeah you, can, you can't really could... ask for more than that kind of reaction right like what more can you ask for as a, a filmmaker yeah. artist of any kind of people reacting that way. And, and what has really made me happy is how people have zeroed in on individual contributions to the film. Um, the actors and other creatives, especially Kaylee, um, who people have like responded so amazingly to all of your creative uh, what decisions and what you brought to the film. And maybe you can talk a, a little bit about that because it's such yeah. a big part of the movie, the wardrobe yeah. and the costume design. It's wild. It's really wild because I know that we had a lot of early conversations, the three of us, being like, how can we make this relationship seem the most authentic? How can we swap their clothes? How can we add in these, a whole other story in their costumes mm -hmm. that's not told? And um, I was sort of looking up 90s uh, accessories and the little chevron bracelets came up and I was like, maybe they should make friendship bracelets for each other. Yeah. Friends, roommates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. yeah. And, and that, that becomes a scene in the movie where they're making it too. Like we, you know, that's what costume can actually contribute. Like you can get scenes out of costume, you know? Yeah, I still haven't received a writing credit, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny when it's so <laughs> and it becomes iconic is like these these bracelets and now there's a new poster 
And um, it started out just, yeah, as a conversation. And it really, I think, organically made itself a part of the film. Mm -hmm. Like, when I first started making them, I realized it took like eight hours to make one. And so I handed it off to my <laughs> assistant. <laughs> and I had one half done taped to my living room floor for the entire production. And I was like, I'll get back to it. But the first one <laughs> ran into spring, so it's short. And organically, again, it, it, I was like, well, I have this little stubby one that looks kind of not well done. Maybe that is her three year later one that has come unraveled and she keeps kind of redoing it and it's getting shorter and smaller. And I'm like, oh, that's heartbreaking. And she keeps it on three years later. Uh -oh. It sort of evolved in that yeah. way to become its own character. And I think it was, that was totally just like a kismet thing. It was supposed to happen and yeah. somehow it channeled through that. But those bracelets want to exist. But even like, creating their 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 looks from the beginning it was such a conversation like about the era about yeah. their evolving personalities about their relationship evolving like yeah i mean sarah and i from from my interview i was like i love the script and and uh we were on zoom together and it was like a lot of this speaks to me and on a very personal level and I also care so much about representation behind the camera as much as in front of, so we can all support each other in the yeah. telling of a story. And I was like, I love to be able to just have gay shorthand. Yeah. And she was like, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, I guess my final test, uh, <laughs> can you, she asked me to make mood boards for um, JV and Marika, and I made them and sent them that day because it was really easy. I was like, I envisioned them so clearly, and they were literally the same with some of the same photos pulled from Pinterest. Yeah. We're like, oh, we're immediately like on the same wavelength. And it was uh, kind of easier to do Jamie's. Yeah, so much easier. We all want to be a Jamie, we're all attracted to a Jamie, <laughs> but then us Marikas out in the world. <laughs> I just don't care that I was a Marika. But it was it was great to be able to like put in really personal touches that you know she was able to embody um a young lesbian in the nineties wearing a jean jacket that was mine that I wore in the early two thousands yeah. that, that was bought from the eighties. Yeah. Um and I used a lot of my clothes and my partner's clothes, which I think really represented both a Jamie and Marika. Also I'm wearing Jamie's shirt. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> People kept asking to buy pieces, and I was like, no, these are my personal ones. <laughs> Jamie's shoes, Anwen ended up wearing her own Converse, because I had bought new Converse and was going to break them down, and she's like, I already have really old, dirty, disgusting Converse. <laughs> so perfect. Yeah. And so sh I think shoes for a lot of actors, um, you know, it's a big part of like, mm -hmm. Literally taking a walk, to, taking a walk in someone else's shoes, and so having her own. I think I won't speak for you, but like, is is a cool little personal touch. Even yeah. the docks, the docks were rented from a queer woman who was formerly a Jehovah's Witness. So like every single kind of part of the the costumes was really, yeah. I think, had its own history beforehand yeah. of lesbians past. Yeah. And I, I love that everyone on the crew, whoever walked into the costume trailer, looked at Jamie's. Or Jim was like, oh, I have all those. Uh, that's what I'm like, good, good. I'm yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah uh, two things. One is that, Kayla, you absolutely, like, nailed that first interview. Like, we all walked away, like, from that. Like, you were so good in that interview. You, like, you knew, we just knew, exa you knew exactly what we were, were doing. Yeah. And second, like, I think we just love the, the personalization. And I think it's always... I always encourage people working on the film, bring your own personal things, your own personal object or clothing or, you know, something that's meaningful to you. Um, it's always, the audience is always going to sense it on some magical level, even if they don't actually know it. Like, there's just something about that that I think is really special. So, like, yeah, it's uh, amazing that you were able to do that. Somebody somebody did ask, I didn't write it down, but somebody asked if you two had your a favorite outfit of the characters. Mm -hmm. Mm. Probably the last one because I have the entire outfit. <laughs> I have the entire outfit. I don't have the blue streaks, but I have everything else, like the mm. nose and the whole black cute outfit. I love it. I love. I love when. Um, I love the mac and cheese scene stuff because it's like Marika's maybe like trying on like like trying to impress Jamie with like an oversized plaid like dad's shirt you know and then I also love like when we change clothes in the baptism scene and Marika's mm -hmm. then wearing Jamie's shirt and, um, and it's not been lost on people that Marika's wearing Jamie's hoodie 
Yeah. She's probably at the end. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad people pick, pick up on that. It's yeah. So <laughs> Your favorite is the flute girl shirt, which is how I found out I'm a Marika. Because I sent Sarah some shirts. What's the flute girl shirt? No. Yeah, I'm having a little bit of trouble figuring out Marika, who her, like what her personal style was, because there's she's kind of such an enigma, and she has this like cognitive cognitive dissonance where you're like, who who is she? So I said she's the girl who plays flute in high school band, and that was me, and I was like, <laughs> right, oh, okay, fuck, Sarah, that's me. Flute girl shirt, and then <laughs> I was I was made fun of. No, oh. <laughs> that's not what I meant. Such a yeah. simple, it's such a simple descriptor, but it says everything. Yeah, yeah that's true. Oh, it's so cute. Uh, I'm going to take over and ask our directors some questions because we want to hear from you, stars. Um, so someone said that the soundtrack is perfect. Well done. Uh, did it take you a long time to craft the sound of the film or did you have an idea already of the songs that you wanted in your writing process? Well, there's songs and there's score. I'll touch on the songs a bit. Mark will touch on the score. Um, the songs were just like, it was sort of like a fantasy that we would just put in these songs that we love from Jeannie's mixtape. It was like, oh, let's just throw the Cocteau Twins in and see see if we can get away with it. Let's just, you know, see if a Breeders song, we get away with it. And then our incredible producer, Rob Broom, made magic happen and they're in the movie. I remember when we found out we were allowed to use them, Mark and I were just like vibrating. We were so excited. Because <laughs> so yeah, we have to understand is those, those songs were on our mixtapes. Like that's what we listened to when we were, uh, you know, in the 90s and, and teenagers. And so again, talking about like bringing your own personal stuff to a movie, like those, those were the, that was the music that we loved as as teens. So to be able to put it in the movie was like, we couldn't even imagine, like we were, we were, we're kind of resigned to getting some like sound alikes or something. Um, so yeah, the Cocteau Twins, the Breeders, I mean, just good stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, Sarah put up Jamie's mixtape on Spotify and you, you should check it out because it's, it's a good mixtape. Um, in terms of the score, so we worked with um, a musician named CFCF, uh, whose real name is Michael Silver. Um, Mike, I knew from um, when I used to DJ and he was like, the, a very young kind of like music prodigy who would come DJ with us when he was like 16 years old and we were in our early 20s and I always knew he made music and he, he makes this like beautiful electronic music and he scored a short that I made and it was like the fourth score that he had done and it was so good that I was immediately like okay we I just want to keep working with Mike and when we do this feature I want Mike to do the score so what we ended up doing was over the next like I don't even think he knew that we were <laughs> intending on getting him for the score, but for the next like five years or even more, we would listen to his music quite a lot. Uh, when we were, I almost said when we were studying, when we were writing the film. So we really wrote to his music, not to the specific pieces he later composed for the score, but with that vibe in mind, we wanted something because his music is like, you know, it's beautiful and ethereal and electronic and it has a bit of a nineties to it, even though it doesn't sound like music that was made in the nineties. So we just knew it was perfect. So we, we brought him in and he was super excited to do the film and he would just send us sketches and we'd put them over video and watch and, and tweak and, and get right. And, uh, oh, and hypocrite, which is, you know, sort of in between score and song because it's a song that he did with a, a Quebec composer and pianist named Jean-Michel Blais. And I remember uh, they did a collaboration EP and I remember seeing them play together in concert, I think for the first time some years ago and they played that, that track. And I was like, I, I have to have that song that has to be in a movie. And we ended up really kind of building the whole movie around that, that one track, Hypocrite. Um, we shared which, it with you guys, I think pretty early yeah. on. And I, on when you used yeah. to it the whole time. It made me cry so much. It oh, still yeah. does. I, I, I mean, would listen to that every, every day yeah, before going. It would also me make me cry because we're emotional yeah. babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we, and we, emotional song. yeah. And, and there's something about the fact that it's like organic piano, it turns into electronic and that was sort of a cue that we gave for Mike which was like we liked where the organic and the electronic kind of met and intermingled and morphed into each other so you you you'll you hear that throughout the movie in, in different cues that he that he composed for us I like this perfect this person said it was perfect so perfect. well well done <laughs> um the next question is like half a comment half a question gotcha. so i will say the comment first to not lead you in any answers uh, so people notice and love 
that Marika and Jamie's sexualities were never used to define them. They just are. They happen to be queer. Um, they also weren't ever caught in their most romantic, intimate moments, unlike a lot of queer lesbian films. And I think we all have a lot of trauma from that. Yep. Um, so were there things that you were very particular or careful about when it came to the sapphic aspects of the film and things that you knew for sure you wanted to avoid when creating a film like this? Yes. Uh, I didn't want either of them to die. <laughs> that was... <laughs> Step you're one. welcome yeah. that you're alive um and you know i know that some people feel like the ending is tragic um but to me the ending is realistic the ending feels like these are two people at a precipice like who knows but i didn't want a suicide or a death or just like someone lo losing their mind or i just wanted two people to evolve and like sort of like begin the journey of finding themselves towards the end they're still very young mm -hmm. yeah. um and yeah that getting caught while like in the scene of intimacy as a queer person watching any movie you just are on the end you're just like you can't even really enjoy the no. sexy scenes because it's just like you're waiting for them to get yeah you're waiting for it so we were like <clears throat> let, let them have this let them have these moments that are uninterrupted mm -hmm. and that is something that i think is so important because they're going to get busted eventually. Just let them have some fun. Yeah, we, we wanted it to feel like the community was sort of gradually catching on to what was happening, um, but not have it be this big traumatic discovery. And so we really worked a lot on that scene of when they are seen and who was it that sees them and where they're seen and why they choose that moment to be a little more open in public. Uh, we wanted to just really fine tune that and get it right and not, um, have it be like some angry person barging into a bedroom. Like, you know, that was the last thing we wanted. <laughs> um, and we didn't want to see them get screamed at. You know what I mean? Like we did. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of deliberately don't show the conversations that happen after that. Yeah. Um, and, and in terms of the ending, like we, from the, one of the first decisions we made very early on is we wanted the ending to be ambiguous. And in the sense that we wanted everyone to walk away from the movie, wondering what happened and thinking about what happened and deciding for themselves what happened. After the, you know, after the last cut, like, it's your movie now. Like, you decide. We're not going to tell you what happens. Um, it's up to you. And as a I mean, my whole life, my favorite kind of movies were the ones that just sort of kept going on in my head when I left the theater. And so uh, we're not going to give a definitive what happens. As much as I know, uh, some people would love us to. Mark and I, not, Mark and I won't talk about what, what we think happens. <clears throat> That's, but, that's, 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 we already, we, that's how we wrote it. That's how it ends for us. Yeah, it's yours now. <laughs> and we'd love to hear what you think happened. <laughs> yeah. I think the agency that you give both of them and this, this film in particular is, is very remarkable. And I think it's something that audiences have commented on that they make all of their own choices. Like they don't do anything because people are telling them to do. They make these choices. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and then we leave the choice to the audience. Mm -hmm. And so it empowers everyone in, yeah. the, in the experience of watching the film. And I think that's really special for this type of film. So thanks for making it, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they even make some of the, the, some of the worst choices they make are their own, you know, like some of the most like yeah. oh, yeah. traumatic choices they make are their oh, choices. Yeah. Hell yeah, it's my choice to get married. <laughs> no one can oh. take that from me. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, guys, speed round. One word answer. Oh, nice. wait. I I, we, I totally forgot, it's my fault. We, someone asked about Has working with Hassani and uh, we love Hassani so much that I, I, I want to hear- Hassani. What, uh, We love Hassani. Sani's oh. dope and he's funny and he's talented and he can make you laugh no matter what. I love he, him. I love watching him in the film. I loved, I didn't, ha I had one scene with him but I love watching his work. I think he brings like, He's like the best friend a young queer like woman in the 90s could have, you know, like he made Nate so lovable and so supportive um, and it was just so beautiful. I love watching his performance in the film. Oh, he's Some beautiful. of the yeah. Every costume. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Anwen, you had you had every scene with him, like you guys- I I know, and I'm so, yeah. I'm so glad that I got to experience all of that with him. I feel like we connected in such a way that was so similar to Jamie and him. Like we literally probably sounded like I think we sounded like stoners the entire time that Sonny and I Can were confirm. talking, like just us yes. two because we sounded dumb as hell. But like in the most beautiful way where we thought we were being philosophical, but it probably sounded like horrible. No, <laughs> I feel like we're so similar to the characters to, yeah. together. We we would listen to them like chatting on the on the headphones between takes, and it was we would be like dying with laughter. In fact, some of the things that you said to each other ended up in the film. Yeah. Uh, because we love them so much. Like the cup of Joe line. We were oh, like, yeah, cup right, of Joe. Right. <laughs> I was like. Wait, yeah. we gotta put that, that in. That was a like, stroke of brilliance. <laughs> so good. So good. He's so good. He's so funny. Mm -hmm. Love Asani. Asani. We love Asani. Sonny. Sonny. All, right. All right, now speed round. for your speed round. So one word answers. Why don't we do <clears throat> on when June Sarah Mark every single time, okay? On when June Sarah Mark. Okay. okay. One word answers? Well, yeah, unless it's like three words. You may have one crumb. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Did Nate have a crush on Jamie? No, he's also gay. Ooh. Oh shit. <laughs> My world. Okay, that's way more than one word. I'm sorry. Continue. This is better now. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Did Nate have a crush on Jamie? Two. No. No. Right. Oh, what did you say, Onwen? Yes. No, because in my world, he's also gay. <laughs> oh, surprise! Pretty sure this is a Could speed be. round. And not a okay. <laughs> did Onwen break Jamie's glasses? It's just for Onwen. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. She did not. She's very good. I at I forgot them multiple times. So many times. Yeah. This is more than one word. <laughs> but no, I did not. To remember the glasses, so. Yeah, it's, that's not your job. Uh, what flavor was the jello? Spinach. Lime. Guacamole. <laughs> I like to imagine that it was nothing. It was just cubes of gelatin with green color. <laughs> That's disgusting. The most awkward. Just the texture for people who like oh. French textures. Just like taking a bite, realizing we're going to have to keep eating this for a while. Mm. Now, but June, you cut your jello cubes into the tiniest mini cubes. You, you bet I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfect. Mm. All of the sites you shot at, what was your favorite location? Uh, Dune. Dune. Tadasek. Dune Ciclorama. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, Ciclo number one. You know what? Let's just explain Ciclorama really quickly. Um, yes. I know it's a speed round, but the scene where they're, you know, the, the round painting uh, where the, you know, are you trying to convert me? And then where they meet at the end for their sort of last embrace. This is really is this crazy place outside of Quebec City that was this 360 degree painting of Jerusalem during the crucifixion that was made in like the 1800s and brought to Quebec on a giant ship and then like set up as like before TV you went and looked at a painting of the Bible and it has been closed for years because it cost too much money to keep up but uh, we had heard about it and we were fascinated with it and we went and knocked on the door and found a phone number and called someone and said like can we shoot our movie there and like miraculously they let us so that's that's what that place is some people we, think we, it's a we museum like part of the script for that, for that yeah location. Yeah, which is really special. So, place. so cool. What was the movie that was playing at the theater when all of that pinky touching happened? Hmm. Batman Returns. No, nope. and we only went because of Michelle well, Pfeiffer. Incorrect. Uh, Dracula. There you go. Yeah. Or the Lawnmower Man. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> this one. It's funny, and there's a little skull emoji in it. So, <laughs> did you even breathe during the back hug scene? Because I was seriously worried Jamie, in particular, would just pass out. Skull emoji. The acting in that scene was so intense. Honestly, <laughs> insane. 
standing ovation. We didn't breathe. I think the whole- I don't even know how I, to breathe. I, I felt like we were breathing a lot, actually. There's a lot of heavy breathing. Just see. For me personally, that was my experience. You too? Yeah, I, I was breathing. <laughs> but that's good. We breathed. Yeah. But but that was a scene that we we you know one of the early scenes that we thought of first and just yeah. knew was like the sort of like the the what well, the scene around which kind of the whole movie pivoted. Yeah. Um, what was, that? <laughs> <laughs> was that Christopher? That's Christopher. Can he come right. say hello. Okay. Sorry. Hey. What was the song that Marika played on the piano? <laughs> That was uh, <laughs> so. That was uh, Chopin. It was uh, his fourth ballad. The four Chopin ballads are, are some of my favorite classical piano pieces of all time, and I highly recommend listening to them. They're they're really just wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> any of you guys former Jehovah's Witnesses? Yes. <laughs> Are you all? Yeah, all of Everyone us. Everyone nodded, so. All of us, sorry. Just Sarah. What is everyone's favorite lesbian film? Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I mean, that's Likewise, my that's my, also my answer. Nope. I think I want to fight. How'd you, guys, how'd you guys first see that movie, huh? In theaters because when it came out. Yeah, right. <laughs> This is a trick question. Because it was because of you. Answers. You can live forever. Mm. <laughs> Did Anwen really smoke in the film? Um, I sm smoked some herbs. <laughs> what 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 was it? Like chamomile and some other mint or whatever. I think I was smoking oh, chamomile and mint. Wow. Highly recommend. It's like a Don't smoke weed, movie, kids. A movie. Smoke chamomile, guys. <laughs> um, how old were Marika and Jamie at the beginning and then at the end of the movie? They are 17. Four years past, they are 21. 21? Still babies. Still babies. Babies. Marika. Baby I'm a baby with a baby, so more. No. Yeah. Okay, not um, to be a Taylor Swift fan, but this is not me, this is the quote. <laughs> not to be a Taylor Swift fan, but what do you guys think is the Taylor Swift song for Jamie and Marika? <laughs> and I, if you don't know a Taylor Swift song, name another song that would be their song. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm removing the Taylor of it all. Well, I think I. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice? Beach Boys. Mm. Wow. There you go. That's yeah, cool. that's what I feel. Um, I have a sad, there's only one song that I really listened to by Taylor Swift. I'm sorry, roast me, but it's with Bonnie Vare and it's called Exile and it's sad and heartbreaking. And that's the Taylor Swift song I would choose because that's all I know. There's one she did with Zane called I Don't Wanna Live Forever uh, for the Fifty Shades Darker soundtrack. Uh, oh, so I'm gonna have to go with that. <laughs> oh, that's oh, a good yeah. one, Mark. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm gonna pass it back over to Mark to ask you wonderful actors and character questions. Get into character, Jamie Marika. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, who fell in love first, or was in love at first sight? Hmm. Mm. I don't know if I would say love at first sight, but it definitely was extreme connection at first sight that kind of for uh on, on from my perspective marika's perspective anyway it's like that the undeniable chemistry that you sometimes find with people out in the world that's just just so drawn to them instantly i think that's what marika felt with jamie i feel jamie was probably like damn she's hot <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding I, I agree with June her answer is so much better and I would have said the same thing because it's beautiful um I second June 
Uh, June, how did you deal with the, the, the sort of cognitive dissonance in Marika's character? And, uh, you know, how does she grapple with it? And how was she able to sort of take on such an aggressive role in the relationship? Yeah. Um, we, we talked about this in ways of, it's, it's for me anyway, as an actor, I was like, it's really hard to intellectualize this cognitive dissonance because um, I've just, I've had experiences with people who I've seen firsthand, like deal with either sexuality or, or having sex before marriage and the way that they can like make it make sense to them. Um, and so I brought what I knew from that to Marika, but we talked about it in ways of like, when when does Marika feel, you know, when does she feel like most open with Jamie and what are, what are the moments where she's feeling, um, not necessarily the pressure, but she's just feeling very close to like her religion. And it's like, becomes, you know, like moving her hand away from Jamie and like, let's go on this double date. Um, and it was just kind of talking about maybe talking about it or thinking about it in that sense. And like thinking about, yeah, like how is she, how is she able to take on such an aggressive role? I, I think it just, her love story, like her, her relationship with Jamie just got to a point that was just undeniable. And there was no, there was no turning back um, for her. I think it was just, it was just all feelings. It was no, no logic um, in those moments. Yeah. So like, you know, um, following up on that. So for a moment, like when Marika invited Jamie to the Bible study, did she sort of like, you think she pre-planned that she was going to kiss her or do you, or, or was it something that you thought just sort of like came to her in the moment? Mm, I think she had, yeah, I think she had thoughts about wanting to do, I think to a certain extent it was like premeditated, but also um, because there's, there's all this, like, the, I, I think it's so interesting. The, like, will you pray with me um, line? We talked about how that kind of subverted um, a lot of other tropes because in, um, in, in other media, like in, in out in the real world, like a lot of men, for example, say like, Use, saying something like this makes me feel good as a way of I don't want to say manipulating but like can't could be um and I think I don't think Marika was like aware necessarily completely of the the power that she had over Jamie but um I think that desire was there for something to happen um and it presented itself uh she kind of was able to to um have that moment because they went to Bible study and it's like, well, we're just walking home together, you know, and we're alone. This is a moment we're able to be alone. So I'm going to flip the script and ask a similar question to Onwen. A lot of people ask this. Did Jamie intentionally leave her scarf in the car? Mm. Um, okay. So thinking about it, looking back on it, this, this was, this was on when thinking about it. And I was like a bit of both of not and doing so with in the moment, in the car, not thinking about the scarf at all, going to get out. And then there's like a flicker of remembering, but choosing not to go back for it kind of thing. Whether it's like after shutting the door, just like walking away a little bit, trying to like kind of like leave or get away from the situation <clears throat> and that's what I was thinking before that it's like a bit of both but then I was and then I heard Sarah's opinion which is not that <laughs> and I, I was I was like okay let me actually think back to when I was acting it and actually feeling it and then I was like I was not thinking about the scarf at all no so I remember I like you like you were yeah that's kind of the truth then yeah, because that's how it was in the moment when I was acting it. I the scarf thought, was. What we talked about was I just thought like your scarf is the last thing on your mind after that whole theater sequence. Like mm. thinking about your fucking scarf. She's right. I wasn't. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it, it was God's will that you were. It's made God's out. will. That scarf Hova's was will. Act of God. But there's. A it was Marika seizing the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, but Marika. Perfect idea. 
There's a good question, a follow-up question for Marika. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if this is one you, you mean, but, um, uh, you know, when uh, the girls are talking about their first kiss. No, no, no. And, oh, the, with, the question is, if Jamie hadn't forgotten her scarf, would Marika oh, follow, right. follow her anyway? Right. Mm. Like all that pent-up energy from the, from the theater. You, you would she have found an excuse? I think she would. Yeah, I think she would have. Yeah, because it was, it was like Jamie being able to. I mean, it was like. I mean, Marika did sort of initiate that, but she couldn't then like close the gap all the way. Um, so I think it was like building up to something, and we talked about that in shooting the scene. How then. Marika is like, you know, seizing the moment to give her the scarf. And then it, it is Jamie being able to like, finally kind of close the gap between them. That then is like, you know, sparks. You know, <laughs> I think when we wrote it, we didn't even write in that there was necessarily a scarf. Like, that, like I think we wrote mm -hmm. it originally as like, she just says she forgot her scarf and runs after her. Um, oh, interesting. The scarf didn't need to actually be there. <laughs> Mm. Um, there would have been a scarf either way. <laughs> the mm. way. I was just reading the directions given to me in the script. Whoops. There was a real scarf. No, I mean, when we first, when the, when our first idea for the scene, I think, was like she was going to lie if she had to and yeah. like find a reason. Got it. I love that. I think that sort of really is in alignment with my understanding of that situation. Perfect. Perfect then. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, the scene where they talk about their first kisses and uh, Marika really uh, does not react well to the fact that to what Jamie tells her. Someone asked, like, if if Jamie's first kiss was with a guy, do you think Marika would have felt as threatened? Um, or do you think it would have? What, what do you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. Nope, not at all. <laughs> it's because it was another woman. <laughs> that that feels, yeah just way too close to home and just that all that that bubbling jealousy of first love and just doesn't yeah it doesn't like logically you know make any sense but the emotions and the stakes are high she has a lot of moments of jealousy you know mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. uh, element of her character that like yeah. I think that jamie like really feeds off of it it's like a, a real a real funny sort of so I think it's the it's the first time that she's ever like felt these feelings for someone, and then that's it's so with that when you're not equipped to deal with that comes all this jealousy mm -hmm. um, that you just don't know what to do with. You don't know how to articulate that or deal with it in a healthy way necessarily. So it's just comes out as passive aggressive. What do you mean you're playing Genesis? You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> So um, we got, uh, we talked about this a little bit before, but uh, we'll just circle back to it. A lot of people want to, to know what, what we thought happens next for these characters, what happens after the ending. Uh, so to, uh, we already said, Sarah and I, we don't, we're not gonna give our take on it, uh, but June on when we, 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 we are happy uh, to hear yours, if you have. <laughs> Yeet the baby. Travel the world. Uh, Jamie knows some spots she can show off and be like, you know, I know a spot in Europe. <laughs> Let's go to Luca. I my I would like to imagine like in the in the perfect world setting that they do just like they can take the baby and Marika's regret is so big that you know, that she's deciding to like step out of that community and, and really be with Jamie. But I think she's had enough is. separation from Jamie that that's her, her, that's where she's at. Yeah, I would, I mean, in my, in my perfect world setting, that would be where I would put her. It would be like, I've realized that this is, that I, I can't live like this. I mean, you do, mm -hmm. look, pretty, you do look pretty bummed out. Yeah, just a little, <laughs> little haggard and regret. 
Yeah, we went through a lot of jackets. I had to show Mark and Sarah many jackets, and they were like, it's not sad enough. We need to <laughs> <laughs> trying to find So I went through thrift stores throughout the city trying to find what made me feel sad. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that looks like happy mom jacket. <laughs> it doesn't look like sad mom jacket. <laughs> Um, I have some more questions for our directors. Um, so this fan says, I love the staging of the scene where Jamie talks to Nathan about kissing Marika for the first time. And we sort of refer to it as a coming out scene. Was it already in the script to have Jamie laying down or was that worked into the blocking for the scene? I love how it conveyed how relaxed and comfortable Jamie felt in the friendship and that she could open up to him. I also love the editing choice to sometimes just focus on Jamie and hear Nate's voice. One of my favorite scenes in the movie. Mm -hmm. well, I think it's very important, first of all, to point out that Almon did her own stunt in that scene where she comes down the stairs and then flips <laughs> over the back of the house perfectly. She had to do that five or six times, but every time, perfection. Full yeah. Tom Cruise <laughs> vibes yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, it was, I'm proud of myself. Remarkable, like... remarkable yeah. work. Probably your best work. <laughs> I think so as well. And then a lot of the other stuff, um, you know, watching Anwen do that scene, watching um, Sonny do that scene. It was in the editing process, I believe, that we made some decisions. I think we even like uh, zoomed in further than we'd actually zoomed in um, mm -hmm. with the camera on, on the day and we got closer to her as she becomes closer to him by revealing herself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they were just the two of them were just so spectacular to watch that day. We were all just sort of sitting in this small little space in this basement. It's just like the five of us all sitting around closely watching the two of them have this conversation and it's so meaningful yeah. and it's so beautiful to watch the emotion. It's so subtle. Your performance in that scene on one is so subtle, but so beautiful and um revealing and earnest and really it's just a heartwarming scene. I mm -hmm. remember thinking we got to get closer to this moment. Yeah, we, we have to give credit to our editor, Amélie Labrèche, who uh, really found the rhythm of that scene and to what the, the questioner, you know, mentioned about, you know, staying on Jamie a little longer and not cutting, not doing the typical shot, reverse shot cutting um, to emphasize and underline that moment was a really great choice that we really responded to because sometimes it's just like back and forth, back and forth when two people are talking and sometimes you want the editing to help tell that story and to, to, to sort of like allow you to sit in that moment with her. Um, so yeah, so, you know, again, uh, it's great to see Amelie's contribution really be recognized. Uh, and that was one of many, many contributions she made to the film. Yeah, it, it was such a tender moment. And I think it's the one of two where Jamie actually speaks about being gay in the film and both are met with, I love you, I knew, of course. And <laughs> that really removes that sort of traumatic aspect yeah. that a lot of other films yes. sort of have that downfall yeah where it's just like of course yeah yeah was, we didn't want to make a traumatic no. coming out story the trauma is all in the love story yeah as it should and be. <laughs> asani is just such a you know i think one of the main reasons we cast him he's such a good listener and in his auditions he would just listen so well and you could see the sort of gears turning and it was thinking and without mm -hmm. him moving at all and so I think that really pays off in that scene because, you know, you, you needed the best listener to, to really make that scene and understand what was happening without Angel. having some big reaction that... And Hassan's yeah. an angel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So now we have to get into um, more practical questions, questions about the future of the film, streaming, where can we finally see it? Where is it right now? How can we watch it? Well, we are uh, currently doing a festival run. So we are playing festivals um, all over the place. Um, there's a couple we can mention that we're playing in Denver in a few weeks. We'll put this all on the Twitter because we don't remember the actual dates. We're playing uh, the Out South Festival in North Carolina uh, in about 10 days. And we have many more exciting uh, festivals to announce that we can't actually say yet, but that are literally all over the world. So I hope that wherever you are, uh, you'll be able to come and see it. And if not, a lot of them will have online screening components so you can watch it, um, you know, uh, legitimately um, and probably in higher quality than you may have seen it. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, but as for the future, you know, uh, in Canada, we, we, we have a distributor um, called Mongrel Media and they'll be, just, they'll be doing a theatrical run at some point as well as we'll be streaming on Crave and on the CDC. Um, 
And America, we don't know yet. We are still shopping it around and we hope to have news on that uh, before long and, and the rest of the world because we really like people to see our movie in the theater if you can because the theater is where movies live. And, uh, you know, if you can't, that's, all, that's great too. However you can see it, we're happy, but it makes us extra happy if you can actually see it in a movie theater because we love movie theaters. It genuinely makes it a different experience. So, like making it, I'm watching it in the theater, and then depending on how big the screen is, I see different things yeah. every time yeah. I watch it. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And hearing other people's reactions to it, it's like incredible. <laughs> yeah, and also supportive film. Very yes, <laughs> it, it helps us make our next film. You know, exactly. the more so, you can support it. On that note, <laughs> a two-parter. One: Will there be a sequel? You can live forever. <laughs> And will you make more of your films? I know we got a lot of questions about will there be a sequel. I know people want to see them run off into the sunset or do whatever they're going to do, but we have some other things planned. We, we don't currently have plans for a sequel. We'll say that. Um, we, ha we, have a, we have our next project planned. Um, we can't really say much about it now, uh, except I guess we can say it's also set in a period. It's also set in the past. It's also, um, I don't even know what to say, but I think, I think we think we're really going to like it. Um, we think it's really cool. Really excited about this idea. Um, and we really hope it, to get a chance to make it soon. So uh, is there anything, is there any other details we can <laughs> reveal? I think might, I, I, might see some other people on one of these screens, on these screens in the movie too. Maybe. Is it gay? Yeah. It's, oh, listen, listen, here's my solemn swear to you. Is it good? I don't, I would never make anything that wasn't at least a little bit queer. Don't worry. So Luca's yeah. revenge. Luca's revenge. <laughs> Luca's revenge. Oh no. no. <laughs> oh no. I guess that's so, it. Yeah. yeah, again, thank you so much for watching this film, for supporting it, and for like, just making us feel amazing every day to know that people are watching our film and, and connecting with it. Like it's just been mm -hmm. such a great experience yeah, honestly, for all of us. Thank you to mm -hmm. the PC that I have that, that are so incredible. They're just making the most incredible uh, edits and videos. Like it's so, so fucking awesome. We love the yeah, edits, never stop fantastic. making the edits. Oh my so. gosh, they're so sweet. I wish I could respond to all of them and be like, so beautiful, yeah. thank you. Yeah. But I yeah, watched all of them. <laughs> we're so happy to see anything that you make from the film, you know, anything that you recreate or your own creativity, like, you know, like we said, it's, it's in a lot of ways, it's yours now. So uh, we love that you keep surprising us. So thanks for watching. And thank you everyone for being part of this. Who took time. Uh, this was really fun. Super fun. Maybe we'll do a sequel to this. <laughs> yeah. Woo. And stop recording. <laughs>